Welcome to Community Roundtable. I'm your host, Henry Huang, along with my co-host, Marissa Wall. Today I have a, a very good friend of mine, longtime friend of mine, coming to the show. I'm excited to interview him today because he's appeared on this article here, the first Chinese American that owns an NBA franchise, Gino Clark. Gino, can you tell us about it? Well, it's good to be here. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, I've been working with the NBA since 1993. Uh-huh. Wow. And so uh, during the time when uh, they uh, were dealing with all the player development and so forth, I was there to go ahead and do that. And eventually that evolved from the uh, NBA Summer League, which I ran, mm -hmm. to uh, an opportunity to acquire an NBA uh, Development League franchise. Mm -hmm. And uh, Commissioner Stern agreed with me that we needed some uh, diversity. Mm -hmm. uh, in the NBA, so uh, so uh, it all came together, and uh, that's how we were able to acquire uh, a team in the D League. Okay, wow. tell us about um, what's a D League. I mean, I, I think a lot of people only recognize NBA like the Lakers right. or the Boston mm -hmm. Celtics. What's a D League? The D League, uh, the D of course stands for development, and it's player development. Mm -hmm. okay. And obviously, if you take a look at not only the NBA draft. When I was a kid, the NBA draft lasted like 10 rounds. Now it's only a couple of rounds. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And there are a lot of players that actually go undrafted. And so they needed to find a place where these players could develop. Not just the players that are drafted, but the players that are undrafted. So, for example, the Lakers, every year when they draft somebody, they have them play in the development league because, as George Carl would say, you can never improve your basketball skill if you're sitting on the bench. I see. Now, when you're talking about draft, uh, these players that you get for your development league, is it like the third round draft, fourth round draft, at least player coming from the third or fourth round draft? Uh, well, in the NBA, there are only two rounds in the draft. Okay. And so these are players that come from NBA drafts. So an NBA team would select somebody and they would go ahead and put the player in the D League to give them the opportunity to play. Oh. So it isn't just those players, but it's also other players that uh, the NBA feels uh, have a, a future uh, mm -hmm. in the NBA. So there actually have been a number of players that have gone on to the D-League that have never been drafted and mm -hmm. have been able to use the opportunity to play against NBA competition in an NBA environment and thereby show that they're able to play at that skill level. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I, I remember the summer league. Summer league, I seem to recall, is sometimes it's an, like a training thing when, when NBA season's over, some player want to either maintain their shape or want to get their skill uh, improved. They, they actually go to summer league and, and, and play, right? Is that what was the first of all the summer league was about? Yeah, when I, uh, when, when I had operated the summer league, Mm -hmm. We had essentially two types of players. We had players that were trying to get into the NBA mm -hmm. and players that were already in the NBA that needed to maintain, obviously, their conditioning and their skill level to continue to play in the NBA. And so I'll give you an example. In 1996, which was a very interesting year for, uh, for the NBA Summer League because that was the year where I was able to get the... Chinese Olympic team or their national team mm. to come outside of, of China just for development and training purposes. The, the whole team? The whole team because oh. the 1996 was the year of the Olympic Games. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So I had gone to uh, Beijing and spoke to the Chinese Basketball Association and said that you may want to do what you can to uh, better prepare your team. Mm -hmm. And so they got back to me uh, early in 1996 and say, hey, I agree with you, all right? So uh, we're going to give you our team mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, for over a week, and you go ahead and, and, and do what you can to prepare this team for the Olympic Games. Play, play, as, many can, play as many games as you can with these uh, NBA-type players. Well, it's, when you put a training program together, you have to follow the right formula. And the right formula is not just games, but they have to have some training mm -hmm. uh, opportunities. They have to be able to uh, uh, have coaching right. interchange. 
And, and one of the great things that happened at that time is when I went to the NBA and I went to uh, the NBA teams that were participating, uh, they were very supportive of it. So I remember the first time when the team came and we had a press conference and Coach Gong was the uh, head coach at the mm -hmm. time of the team. Mm -hmm. I introduced him to Del Harris, who was the head coach of the Lakers at that time. Right, right. And Del Harris was, uh, is, is one of the most uh, intellectual uh, basketball coaches that I've ever met. Uh, he's actually written a, a number of books on basketball. Oh, yeah. And came mm -hmm. and, and uh, spoke to uh, Coach Gong and his staff and talked about playing basketball in the NBA. And, and then there were some practices as well. So I remember I had a practice set up between the Chinese, for example, and the Portland Trailblazers, who had Jermaine O'Neal at the time uh -huh. on, the, on, on that team. And the practices were great because in a, in a practice, you can actually stop play and, and instruct mm -hmm. players what they should be doing or what they shouldn't be doing. And at the same time, coaches are much more free to give pointers during that time. Obviously, when you're playing a game, opposing coach is not really going to help your team, right? Right, right? right. But in a practice environment, they would go ahead and do that. Oh, that's oh, really interesting. Yeah. So, uh, so that, so, so, but back to your original question about who's playing and so. So, in 1996, the Lakers drafted uh, Kobe Bryant and Derek Fisher, and so they immediately went into the summer league. Really. Oh. And so oh. those two players were there, and I remember uh, 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 talking to to the, to the team and 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 to the coaches about what they thought and so forth. So, again, it, that's that's where it all happens. That, that's great. Yeah. You, so you actually got to meet Kobe when he first entered the NBA. Right. I remember wow. what struck me about Kobe Bryant was. I yeah, was, what was he like then? Mm -hmm. Well, I was, I was sitting in, a, uh, in our, one of our hospitality rooms, and I had a kid who at that time was uh, 18 years old, and he asked me whether or not he could play in my high school All-Star game. Mm -hmm. And and I was you know sitting and talking about it, and then I realized that this kid who was who wanted to play in my high school all star game was actually older than Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant was drafted when he was seventeen right. years old. Oh. so young. And when he, when when I first met uh, Kobe, he was there with his parents, mm -hmm. uh, Joe Jellybean Bryant, <laughs> and and he was just a really nice kid, mm -hmm. you know, very mm -hmm. very uh, down to earth. Uh, 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 he was as young as you can imagine, but when, 17. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you saw him at that age, 17, did you ever, <laughs> in your wildest imagination, <laughs> that he could be this good today? Yeah, the star that he is today. Well, I think that you have to go back and you have to ask people like Jerry West and, and, and the front office what the situation was. If, if you think about it, back when Michael Jordan was drafted, People always disparage the Portland Trailblazers because they drafted Sam Bowie ahead of, uh, of Michael Jordan, who was drafted third that year right. by Rod yeah. Thorne. And and you know, is Rod Thorne a genius? Well, obviously Rod Thorne made a made a good selection at mm -hmm. that time. But I would argue and say, well, wouldn't it be more of a genius if Rod Thorne had a lower pick and and essentially traded some really important players? Mm -hmm. in order to get the third pick just to draft Jordan. Mm 